Cypress continues to improve its developer experience. So in this lesson, we will look at how you can add Cypress to an existing project, use it for end-to-end -end testing, along with using it for the newly revamped component testing feature. So let's go. Now, as far as end-to-end -end tests go, it really doesn't matter what framework you are using. What matters is how your application behaves. And here we have a simple login form where the user can input an email address and a password and then click the submit button. This takes them into the authenticated state where we show a simple welcome message. Now let's make sure that this workflow keeps working by using a Cypress end-to-end -end test. To get started with Cypress, we simply need to install the Cypress package, which we can do by npm i Cypress. And with the minus D flag, we are saving it as a dev dependency. Now with the installation out of the way, we can run Cypress at any point by running npx Cypress open. This launches the Cypress UI and new with Cypress 10, we get to choose our own adventure. Traditionally, this only supported E2E tests, but now we have a choice between E2E or component tests. Let's start with an end-to-end -end test. Now this new release of Cypress is pretty streamlined in terms of its configuration setup. It automatically sets up the key configuration files. We have cypress.config.ts, which is the main configuration file support E2E, which is something that is loaded before every E2E spec and can be used to customize various things. And one of those files is a commands file, which is something that is used to provide custom commands. And Cypress creates this reference commands file for us as well. And finally, we have a simple fixture, which is just a demo of where you can put your fixtures so that you can use them as mock data within your tests. With the setup out of the way, let's press continue. And now we are ready to start end-to-end -end testing. Now we're going to be testing with Chrome, but other browsers will show up over here if you have them installed on your system. Now this takes us into the Cypress runner. And right now, because we don't have any specs, we can create a new one over here. So let's do that. And we'll call our spec login.sci.ts because that is the workflow that we are testing. So let's press create spec. And this is the scaffold spec that it is going to generate for us. And I already know that this spec is not going to work because there is nothing listening on slash. That is, if you open up a browser and visit slash, you're not going to get anything, but let's run it anyways. And as you can see, this is exactly what happens. There is nothing found at slash. Now, any spec that you are running, you can actually click on the spec file name to open it up within your IDE. So for me, clicking this opens it up within VS code. Now I'm using TypeScript as we do for all things on this channel. So we are getting some errors over here that you wouldn't get if you were using just JavaScript. And the reason for these errors is that TypeScript wants all files in our project to be a module, but this file does not import or export anything. So we'll fix that along with the fact that the Cypress definitions aren't being loaded right now. And we can do both of these modifications from our tsconfig.json. Now within the tsconfig.json, we can specify that isolated modules are no longer required so that we can have these test files, which are not modules. And for the Cypress type definitions, we add a types field. We add the node as well as the Cypress types. And now because our test is actually located within the Cypress folder, we add that to the include path as well. And now with these changes in place, if we jump back to our spec file, you can see that those errors have gone away and TypeScript is happy with our code base. Now we already know that the spec doesn't work because sci.visit slash fails. And the reason for that is that it is visiting just slash and nothing before it. We know that we are serving our web application at the URL localhost 3000, and we can add that to the cypress.config.ts file that was created by Cypress for us. Within the E2E config, we simply specify the base URL to be localhost 3000. And now if you jump back to the test runner and select this login test again to start executing it, you can see that this works perfectly fine now because now the visit automatically becomes localhost 3000 forward slash. Now let's scaffold the rest of the test for this login workflow. First, we get the input email field using the CSS ID selector, which is specified by hash. Type in the text test at example.com. Then we get the input password field using a similar CSS selector and then type in our password. And next we have to click the submit button. And we know that there is only one button on screen right now. So we just get that button element using a simple CSS selector and then trigger a click by invoking click. Now this will result in a successful login and we can verify that the login was successful by making sure that there is a certain div on screen that contains the text successfully logged in and this div should be visible. With these changes in place, if we jump back to the test runner, you can see that it's already succeeded in the background, but let's just rerun it again so that we can see it unfold in front of our eyes. Now, as you can see, Cypress tests run pretty darn fast. And another great thing about them is that you can step through the individual actions that took place within a test and also see what the DOM looked like when that step was running. This time traveling debugging is one of the main reasons behind the success and popularity of Cypress. 
Now, of course, end-to-end -end testing is a well-respected key proposition from Cypress, but the new thing about Cypress 10 is its support for component testing. So let's look at that journey next. Now, when we talk about components, we are going to have to talk about the framework that the components are written in. Right now, we are using a Create React app, and of course, our components are written in React, and we have a very simple button component to demonstrate what a component test looks like. To get started with component tests, we run the same command that we ran before, which is npx cypress open to open up the cypress test runner. And this time, instead of taking the E2E testing journey, we will jump on the new component testing journey. Now, there are a number of front-end frameworks that are supported by component tests, and there are more coming in the near future. But right now, since we have a create react app, it's automatically detected that and picked that for us. So we don't need to modify that and we can jump into the next step. Now for a create react app component test, it would need these dependencies and Cypress has automatically picked up that they are correctly installed so we can press continue. Now just like Cypress created configuration files for end-to-end -end testing, it creates them for component testing as well. We have the main Cypress config.ts that will get this component section. We have the support component file which is something that you can use to add custom stuff to all of your tests. We have the commands file which we already had and then we have this component index.html which is something that you can use as a replacement for your application index.html. And this is great because you can load custom fonts in this and also not load some analytics or tracking code that you might have within your main application index file. And it's also picked up that we already have the example.json fixture from our end-to-end -end test, so it will not create that, so we can just press continue. And just like with the end-to-end -end tests, for our component testing journey, we get to pick the browser that we want to execute our component tests in, It'll pick the ones that are installed on our system and we're just going to be going with Chrome. And right now we don't have any component specs because of course this is the first time we've run this. So we can use this big button to create a new component spec for us. And by default, it wants to create them within the Cypress component folder. But I recommend that you create your component tests right next to the component that you are testing. So our component is under source button.tsx. So we will create the component test as source button.sci.tsx. Now this will create a pretty empty spec file for us and this will run because this has no body inside of it. So let's just go ahead and run it and as expected it runs perfectly fine. And you can see that because this is a brand spanking new feature there is a nice helpful tip over here to point you to some docs in case you run into any issues. But let's open this test up within our IDE by clicking the spec file name just like we did for the end-to-end -end test. Now in order to test a component, the first thing that we will obviously have to do is to import the component. And then within the test, we mount the component to the DOM by using the sci.mount command that was already present for us, just that it was commented out. And this command takes a simple JSX element that we want to render, and we are going to render the button component with the text test inside of it. And if we jump back to the test runner, you can see that it's already executed, but there is something peculiar about this result. The button does not appear to be styled. The need to customize your component test setup is going to be the same irrespective of your choice for component testing frameworks because now you are running your code directly and you're responsible for essentially bundling it instead of it being bundled by some external setup and then being shipped to a web server and then an end-to-end -end test running. Fortunately for well-defined frameworks, it's going to be pretty easy and you can see that we have the component section already configured for us as a part of the initial run and what this is saying is that it should use the dev server which is specific to the create react app framework which uses webpack as its main bundler. This means that we don't actually have to mess with any configuration. However, our application is still not being styled and the reason for that is if we look at our button spec test, it is importing just the button component and if you look at the button component, you can see that it's not actually importing any CSS. Now, if this button component was using some form of modular CSS where it imports the CSS that it needs in order to function, we wouldn't run into this particular issue, but it provides a nice opportunity to see how your application design choices impact your application component testing. Now, for this particular application that uses Bootstrap, it brings in Bootstrap directly from node underscore modules within the main app component. So if you want the CSS to be present within our component test, we can simply import it within our spec file as well. And with this change in place, if we jump back to the test runner, you can see that it renders exactly how it did within our login form. Now let's create another test that is a bit less trivial than just checking if a component renders. We create a test to make sure that the onClick prop that is passed to the button gets invoked when the button gets clicked. We have access to all of the Cypress features that you might be used to from end-to-end -end testing. For example, we can create a spy function and give it the alias onClick 
and pass that as the onclick prop for the button component. Next, we use the same side.get with the button selector and invoke the click command as we did for our end to end test. Finally, we use the alias to get that onclick spy that we created and make sure that it should have been called. And of course, just like before, the test has already executed in the background, but we can run it again and again, and you can see that Cypress component tests are even faster than end to end tests. And in fact, both of these tests run in under one second. And we have the same level of time travel debugging that we had available when we were doing end to end tests. So we can see what spies were set up, we can see when the button got mounted, when the button got clicked, and if the callback got called or not. What's really great about using Cypress for component testing is that you get to visually debug your components if they don't work as expected. And when things go bad, you can simply inspect whatever you want directly within the DOM and real developer tools. I'll wrap things up there. I've already provided my feedback to the Cypress team as an ambassador, but if there is something that caught your eye, leave that in the comments below. Thank you for joining me. Smash that like and subscribe for more content like this, and I will see you in the next one.